Hello everyone, to the last and the best Metro game in this franchise and that is Metro Exodus. So let's get through the settings really quickly. Now keep in mind this is enhanced edition so the settings are going to be a little bit different. And you can see that I used extreme quality, motion blur as always off, ray tracing on maximum, ultra, Nvidia DLSS is at quality setting. I could use balance but quality was still delivering decent FPS. VRSS is off, don't make mistake, if you go higher it will deliver worse visual fidelity so the off is actually high quality. And other goodness as advanced physics and tessellation is at maximum setting. There's quite a bit of things to unpack in this video, so if you want to see something specific just look for timestamps in the description down below. And for this part I'm going with the gameplay first, then I will show you the most demanding CPU scene that I could find and for the last part it's going to be official benchmark run. So let's get to the gameplay section. And where do I start with this one? Well, let's get to the game itself. Now, as previous, Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light are such a great games. Very good. And this one is the best of them all, at least in my opinion. So, if you want to get into Metro franchise, I would recommend to start from the first one. And then go gradually to this one. So. You can still play Metro Exodus first, but I wouldn't recommend by doing so. In this video I wanted to avoid as much spoilers as I could. So for this part I'm showing one of the beginnings. So it spoils as least story as I can. Now as you can see the game looks fantastic. And in my opinion it is one of the best looking games on the market, at least currently. I saw a few people that complained about the brightness of this enhanced edition and I think you can just reduce gamma in your video settings. That will definitely fix that problem, even though it's not really a problem. Because in this version, if there is no light, there will be no light, like you couldn't see anything. In pretty much all games, there always some light in the scene, despite not having any light sources. So the effect of it is that you can always see in the dark. And in this one, if there is no light, you cannot see anything, like literally anything. So that was one of the major impressions that I got and I was really impressed. And it's one of those things that you don't notice until you experience it. So yeah, that's one of the biggest improvements in graphical fidelity, at least in my opinion, in recent years. And of course there are new features such as ray traced reflections which is also a very nice addition because screen space reflections are always good enough but they become very flawed when you know what to look for and once you see what are those you cannot unsee it and ray trace reflections fix this so in this gameplay i don't show what's the difference but I'm sure you can find on the internet. So as I said, I used VRS off, which is the best quality. It stands for variable ray shading and it basically renders transparent images in lower quality, such as fire and smoke and other effects, as far as I know. So. Don't be fooled, if you turn it on, it will produce better frame rate, but worse picture quality. Usually I could recommend that option, but for a 1390, it's really not necessary, I would say. 
as you can see it's quite a bit above 60 fps so yeah there is no need for that also if you noticed i added new to cpu usage and gpu usage graph it is very tiny but i thought it might be useful for some it's basically history of usage versus those bar charts which you can see so it provides a little bit of additional information i would say And for those people who said that this version is too bright, you can see in this area, like, I really don't agree with them. Maybe it was gamma setting, which I have also adjusted, but it's really not an issue. Also, I wanted to emphasize how nice of developers to release this enhanced edition fully for free. As far as I know, they had to redo whole game lighting and it obviously requires a lot of work, like every scene had to be redone. They introduced also new features, such as retrace reflections, which is absent in original version and honestly I think this is the definitive edition of Metro Exodus. To offer all that for free? I think it is amazing from developers and I just can't be more happy than that. So for this game it was the first time when they, when they went with open world and honestly I think they did very good job at that. But the weakest thing in this game I think is the character movement physics and they are very wonky if you run full speed at one of the hills you can just fly off and it just feels very very clunky so that's the worst thing that I could say about this game and honestly I just cannot recommend it enough You'll be answering for this, you scum. First before me, then before the fish. He's here, brethren!
right? A shame you couldn't get away quietly, without bloodshed. They're bound to hate us even more now. Ah, oh, well. Artyom, Katya, and Nastya are with me now. See you aboard the Aurora. Check the map. Looks like you can look straight to it from there. Now, shortly about the statistics, you can see that the game, at least in this level, utilizes about 8 to 12 CPU threads. And it's really not that much demanding. I will show you significantly more demanding CPU scene later in this video. Also, as you can see with quality setting DLSS, the VRAM usage is around 6 to 7 gigabytes. Without DLSS, I think it's going to be around 9-8 gigabytes. So those GPUs with 8 gigabytes of VRAM might struggle with this one, such as 3070 Ti. And yeah, as for CPU utilization, they are continuing with excellent CPU thread loads, which is distributed quite equally among the threads. That is very welcome to see because you really don't like to see one thread being maximized and others just sleeping. And main system memory is not really that high, I would say. Around 12 gigabytes in total, including my Windows and other programs, which basically are none. But yeah, so 16 gigabytes should be enough for sure. So yep, I'm pretty much done with this part and let's get to the next scene. So as I said, I wanted to avoid as much spoilers as I could, so I will show only this area. But the CP utilization is apparent in this whole chapter, which is pretty short. But I find it very interesting that the CP utilization can jump from 40% all the way to the 60 or sometimes I saw the spike to the 70% utilization. So. I'm pretty sure if I was completely CPU bound, I had very, very strong GPU, pretty sure it would utilize all 32 CPU threads. And honestly, that's amazing. Like, seriously, this is very impressive. Considering this game is originally from 2018, I think. Of course, I don't necessarily say that CPUs with lower CPU core count is going to struggle in this area because, as you can see, it's already in 120 FPS, but the whole utilization just really surprised me. Also, I could easily put this as a screensaver, like really nice scenery. So anyways, I think I'm done with this part and let's get to the last section, which is benchmark built-in tool. So let's go there. Now as per Metro franchise tradition, this game also has built-in benchmark tool, which is pretty good, but it is very GPU bound and if most people test this, they usually test this one or the first section of the gameplay which I showed previously. And honestly, I think this benchmark it doesn't really tell the whole tale, I would say. Because it is extremely GPU intensive and usually you don't see that FPS. I think the level Taiga which is real level in the gameplay, but it is not that intensive as in this benchmark. But I think it is fine to do as stressful as you can benchmark, which basically shows worst case scenario, but it doesn't show for CPU worst case scenario, only in GPU. So at the end, I will show the results of the benchmark. For now, I'm leaving you with this section. As always, thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, and see you next time, of course. So, bye-bye.